Welcome everyone to the AXD Living X Celebration. Um, my name is Dominique Campbell. I am proud uh, to be AXD's project manager and your MC and your hostess with the mostess for this evening. Um, thank you so much to 2015 Kresge Arts Gilda Award Fellow and AXD Artist Sacramento Knox for holding us down uh, with those amazing sounds. Um, and we're super excited about tonight just to have all of you uh, with us. Uh, and before we go uh, any further, um, I definitely want to invite Sacramento Knox to, would you please bless us uh, with the quick lend um, land acknowledgement and just, uh, you know, just some, some words lifted up to our ancestors so we can go into this evening with some really good vibes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Chimigwich Apishmong, Chimigwich Giwednong, Chimigwich Nokumis, Chimigwich Mishomis, Chimigwich Aki, Chimigwich Gichimanatu, Zagiriwin Nikanagina, Gizagin Meshkiki Win, and yeah, Land Back and Anishinaabe Till Infinity. Peace. Thank you so much, Knox. And uh, make sure uh, you guys support the, this this amazing artist. He's doing so, so many great things um, in Detroit through his work. Um, and so again, thank you, Sacramento Knox, and welcome everyone uh, to the AXD Living X celebration. Um, we have a lot to be thankful for. We all have breath in our bodies. We're here. Um, although we are in the virtual world, uh, you know, I have a feeling that a lot of us in this chat, we may know each other. The Detroit artist community is very broad, but it's also very small and tight knit. So feel free to say what's up to, to uh, your fellow artists and your friends and just say hello in general uh, in the chat. We'll be checking the chat uh, all night. We want to know uh, where you're from, where you're tuning in from. If you're a Kresge Artist Fellow, we want you to shout out your fellowship year. Um, and again, we're very excited. Uh, again, my name is Dominique. I'm AXD's uh, project manager. I had the privilege of working with so many talented artists uh, for our AXD uh, series last year. And um, although we've been in quarantine and, you know, the world has been a little crazy, the Root of Two and AXD team has been very busy. Um, and so we have a, a lot of things to be grateful for, not only the culmination of all of the wonderful projects, but also an AXD catalog, an AXD podcast, and we're going to be joined by a few of our AXD artists tonight. Uh, but before we go any further, I would love to introduce you to um, AXD curator and Root of Two's fearless leader, Cezanne Charles. So show her some love. You can clap at your computer or cheer in the chat if you want. So it is my profound pleasure to just welcome everyone. Thank you again to Knox. Thank you to Neek and my other colleagues at Root of Two, including Lauren Rossi and Dominique Campbell for helping to not only shape what has been an amazing year of living both dangerously and living in the X, um, but really going on a journey that I think none of us could have imagined when we started. Um, so I'm gonna take uh, just a few minutes to really ground us in 
kind of what Living X is and why we're all gathered here. Um, and for me, this is also a little bit of a personal moment because I realized that in April of this year, I had been working um, with the Kresge Artist Fellows for 12 years. Um, and so it's been a 12 year evolution of really listening and learning about Detroit through their eyes and through their work and through the power of their connections to community and place um, that have grounded me and welcomed me. So it's with that spirit that I hope we continue this evening. Um, it is a joyful celebration. And so one of the things that I really want to start off with celebrating is just that. Um, Living X, when we first imagined this idea, we thought about how do we bring artists together to really do what they do best, which is, you know, commission vibrant and vital new works that tell stories about neighborhoods and place and community. And one of the things that I really felt um, was important was to recognize all the ways um, that artists were contributing to the work in Detroit. But like everything else, Artix Detroit has a legacy, right? It was my pleasure to work with and partner with Midtown Detroit Inc. for all the years that they managed um, the very successful Artix Detroit series that happened in Midtown and Downtown in Eastern Market. Um, and those were always really vibrant and vital showcases of new work and artists really pushing boundaries and telling amazing stories and having that work contextualized. And so as we thought about reimagining Artex to move into the neighborhoods and to really sort of continue that legacy, but think differently about how artists were already showing up as part of community because they live and work in Detroit. Um, we wanted to make sure that the 22 commissions that were selected um, were really reflective and representative of what we thought this moment was and what we thought this moment was, was upheaval, um, was transformation, was uncertainty, was humor as well as anxiety, it was joy as well as fear, it was trauma as well as profound healing. And so we wanted to make sure that the theme Living X could really encompass all of those ideas. And, you know, we counted on a national panel and local panel of jurors to help us both shape the theme and actually select the final 22. So if any of them are listening in, I want to say a big shout out and thank you to them for that work. And then as we began working with the artists, no sooner had we cut the checks on their commissions than many of us, Neek, Lauren, myself, after working for a very long time at an organization um, called Creative Mini Michigan, found ourselves sort of facing that same sort of upheaval that we thought was at the core and the spirit of this work when that organization decided to close. And so, you know, like everything else, I wish I could say that we didn't miss beat, but of course we did, right? But it was only because the artists held us and supported us and sort of rallied around us and that the foundation continued their support for this work that we were able to successfully transition this work into my creative practice in the studio, Root of Two, who I co-manage with my partner, John Marshall, that we were able to continue to support artists as the real foundation for both civic imaginaries within Detroit as well as catalysts for what can really hold us to our past as well as ground us in our present. And so without further ado, I do just wanna um, say thank you again to the Kresge Foundation. And I would also like to invite um, us to, to hear some words from Michael Williams, Associate Program Officer from the Kresge Foundation about their work um, and their continued sort of support for artists in our community. Welcome, Michael. Thanks, Cezanne, and what's happening in Detroit, and all of you joining us tonight. A big thanks to the whole Root of Two team for keeping the momentum of AHD, even as we've had to make the transition for virtual, from virtual physical space to virtual space. It's the same spirit we saw earlier this week for a different virtual event where we convene representatives of the 28 new projects and planning efforts, totaling nearly $2 million as part of the latest round of Kresge Innovative Projects Detroit. Through that effort, once again, we saw Detroiters coming together in the midst of hard times 
to lead transformative work that will see positive new futures for their communities and Detroit neighborhoods. That's something that's incumbent on all of us. We can't lose sight of where we were before the pandemic. We can't lose sight of the challenges we were facing, but also of the progress we were making. We need to keep the momentum under whatever conditions we face now that we've all had to make public health a central factor in what we do. And to get a sense of that momentum, we can look back to a decade or more of work that brings us to this place today. Cressy began more than a decade ago to invest in the arts at a new level in Detroit. We made a commitment to contribute to the operating expenses of arts organizations in the Detroit Art Support Initiative. And we're proud that over the years, we've joined our efforts with those of the Erb Family Foundation, Hudson Weber, and the DeRoy Testamentary Foundation. In this latest round, we contributed a pooled $12.2 million to 74 arts organizations across Metro Detroit. But even more innovative was our attention to individual artists. In the Kresge Eminent Artist Initiative, we began to recognize and reward the elder artists among us who have contributed to the arts community, to the metropolitan community at large, and the national and international state of their chosen art form. From our first awardee, Charles McGee, to our 12th, Marie Wu, these artists are paragons of artistic excellence and inspiration. In the Kresge Artist Fellowships, we gave support to artists across all career stages for their contributions as working artists, not in recognition of this project or that, not with the expectation that they would bring forth any deliverable, but simply to underline their ongoing role in the community as artists. And with the Gildo Awards, we gave special attention to risk-taking early career artists of great potential. And this year, we awarded a record 20 Cresty Artist Fellowships and 10 Gildo Awards for a total of 30 awards. In announcing the 12th cohort of award recipients, Cresty Arts in Detroit has thus far awarded 252 artists more than $6 million. In 2011, 2013, and 2015, we supported ArtX Detroit to bring Cresty Artist Fellows and eminent artists to dozens of midtown stages and venues. Our final festival spanned 10 days to draw more than 10,000 participants. Then last year, we invited Cezanne, Lauren, Dominique, and their colleagues, originally at Creative Mini Michigan, and then at Route of Two, to reimagine ArtX in a bold way, to connect the energy of Cresty Artist Fellows and Gilda Award winners not only with audiences in Midtown, but with neighborhoods and residents across the city. ArtX Detroit became AXD with a specific mission to connect with neighborhoods and interrogate in various ways this moment where X marks the place and the time. Because alongside Kresge's work in the arts in Detroit, the investment in neighborhoods and resident-driven revitalization is the other great stream of our work in the city. The idea of the connection was exciting. The reality of the connection has been even more exciting. And we're proud to be here celebrating AXD tonight. Now there are further connections to be made through what is about to transpire tonight. And this super dope book and the AXD podcast. Make no mistake, we need these connections and what can grow from them. Conversations, debate, fresh thinking, iterative art making, collaboration, as urgently as ever. This is the time for us to redouble our commitment to make Detroit a more equitable city for all of its residents. Artists have a key role in this struggle, including at the intersections marked by the X. So thank you, Root of Two, our Cresty Artist Fellows for your craft and your work, and all of you joining us in celebration tonight. 
Thank you so much, Michael and the Kresge Foundation. Uh, for the one, for those beautiful words, but you know, for uh, your continued support and investment in Detroit artists, um, the arts community, the arts economy, um, this work could not be done without you guys. So we want to definitely lift you up and give you your flowers now. Um, so <laughs> thank you all so, so very much. And uh, let us know how you guys are feeling. Um, let us know in the chat. Uh, make sure you still pay attention to the chat because we have quite a few uh, fun facts about uh, some of the artists that are presenting uh, and performing tonight. Um, so we're, we're really uh, just excited to just share uh, the, the beauty and the fullness that is the Detroit arts community. Um, like I said, I had the honor of working with so many of our talented uh, Kresge artists, fellows, uh, through AXD and one of these uh, artists that I'm getting ready to bring to you um, is a Detroit icon, a Detroit legend, a Detroit poet, an advocate, and a 2012 Kresge Artist Fellow and just an overall phenomenal woman. So please show some love for Marsha Music who will be reading a piece from her AXD project titled The Detroit. Thank you so much, Dominique. Uh, the, the blessing is all mine. Uh, I was very honored to have been chosen to be able to have as a project the publishing of my first book. Uh, it was uh, based on a number of selections uh, that I have written down through the years and recent years. And the name of my book is The Detroitist. And uh, this selection that I'm going to read now uh, was commissioned for Symphony and D, which was a symphonic project uh, performed by the DSO, uh, written by Todd Macover, and uh, he asked me to write a poem to go with that symphony. And I was very honored to have per performed, to have read this uh, with the symphony. And uh, it is the opening work of the Detroitists. And I thank Kresge for uh, allowing me to, uh, to do this work as a initial project. From the mire and murky loam, bottom black with dusky soil, the first peoples walked this land and heard the rivers rush and roar. Near the water Savoyard, there in battles took a stand, made that fateful crimson flow near the strait called La de toi. From black bottom, swamp and fog, green and verdant ribbons grew. Lush farms risen from the bog, furs and stoves and ironworks. From the briny underground, there arose a great world noise, a symphony of city sounds, the sights and wonders to behold. Here inventions hum and clang, Foundries fire and factories bang. Listen to assembly lines. Hear production stern and drag. Hear the hiss of molten iron turning into model A's. Listen to the shouts of hires working for $5 days. Nations gathered in this place, varied hues and diverse face. Working people prospering, but segregate the darker race. Clack and clatter of streetcars, sound of great Grand Central trains, immigrants and great migration streets were packed between shift change. They came from Europe, they came from South, workers moving all about, roads and streets exhaling steam, the hiss and whining of machines, autos rolling off the line, make the rhythm of the time. Hark the notes of human toiling, hear the shouts of labor's willing. Money makers pulling strings, busting blocks, dividing streets. Profits made by real estate, instigating fright and hate. Driven out by greed and guile, live, leaving city streets behind. But the sounds of flight across eight mile did not to stop the city sound. Blues and jazz and gospel flowed, and record shops were all around. 
but came the news from City Hall, Black Bottom was to be destroyed. And then to make a new freeway, Hastings Street gets wrecking balled. Black Bottom gone and Hastings dead, so many to the west side fled. But drum rolls for equality all went unheard with no scrutiny. And so the rage and fire burned in 67's mutiny. Generations now have gone and destruction changed the city's song. But now those children do return from exile, coming back to learn. With sounds of electronica and techno beats made in this town, I open arms to welcome them, the ones who really want to live amidst we folks who never left, reside together with respect. Some say they come to save Detroit, but I say they come to be saved. Thank you very much. And in that way, I encapsulated the entire history of Detroit in five minute rhyme. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Marsha. On only you can, can encapsulate Detroit's <laughs> history in five minutes. On you. Only you can do that. <laughs> how how, how are you feeling? We haven't, how are you feeling? We haven't seen each other and, you know, people yeah. are seeing you out and about, but with everything kind of being on lockdown, how, tell us a little bit, how, how have you been? How are you holding up? Well, uh, it, it has been uh, challenging, emotionally challenging to be uh, locked down for the period of time that I was. I had to return to my job as an essential uh, several several weeks ago uh so uh, i have uh, had that challenge uh, i'm just grateful to be alive and have this opportunity to be with my tribe once more <laughs> you know i always call all of us our tribe you know uh, we are the people of the arts in detroit and it's a blessing when we are able to gather and so i am looking forward to be able to gather even even in this form Mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, something that we would never have anticipated, but you guys are doing such a wonderful job of making it work and uh, capturing the work of the uh, artists who were blessed enough to be able to do these projects. Well, thank you so much, Marsha. And uh, you know, your poem was great. And we look forward to seeing what uh, you do in the future and uh, supporting your book when it's released. So we'll uh, make sure that we put that information in the chat. And again, thank you so much. Um, and like I said, uh, ladies thank and gentlemen, you. No, thank no, you. no problem, no problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said earlier, you guys, uh, Root of Two and the AXD team, we have been busy during uh, this quarantine and lockdown with everything uh, going on. And, you know, we have a lot to be thankful for. And one of those things um, is our amazing AXD catalog um, that is celebrating and highlighting all of the 22 incredible artists who were a part of AXD. And I am very, very, very excited and honored uh, to give you all a first look at the AXD catalog. Check it out. Artics Detroit explores the changing landscape and narrative of the city and its neighborhoods. AXD marks the intersection of two major facets of the Kresge Foundation's work to revitalize Detroit. It combines their support for individual artists as wellsprings of truth-telling and creativity with support for neighborhoods as the heart and soul of the city, a bringing together of the energy of art with the grounding of place. In 2019, we celebrated the 10-year anniversary of the Kresge Arts in Detroit initiative. During the same 10-year period, Detroit has undergone significant transformation. We are living in times that are seemingly without precedent, and yet artists in this city at this very moment are crafting unimagined futures, uplifting lives sung and unsung from our collective past, giving meaning, clarity, and activism to our present, and more than anything, finding and feeding the joy and humanity that runs through this city. This catalog is a visual reminder of the powerful and engaging work of these artists. Excellent. So 
you know, definitely uh, stay uh, locked into the artxdetroit.com website uh, and our Artx Detroit uh, Instagram and Facebook uh, pages to, uh, you know, stay in the know of how you can get a digital copy um, of that book. And again, we apologize for the technical difficulties. We're on Zoom. We're in the virtual world. Things happen, um, but it's all good, and we uh, we always, you know, overcome and persevere. Um, but yeah, so we're really excited about that. Shout out to uh, Judith Bannum of Middle Cot Design, um, who made that book look so so beautiful. Um, so again, stay locked into the Artex Detroit website, Instagram, Facebook, um, and even in the chat, and we'll. Uh, include some info on how you can get your digital copy. Um, now, Root of Two and AXD, we have an incredible team um, who's really worked uh, tires, tirelessly um, to put together, uh, you know, all things AXD. And I'm super honored and, and blessed to have worked with this woman who's incredible and a powerhouse um, and just an all around good person. So I would like to introduce you all to my wonderful colleague um, and fellow low key artist. She always tells people that she's not an artist, but she's an artist. Um, too. Um, but her name is Lauren Rossi. She's the Arts Initiative Manager of Root of Two, and she'll be joined um, by AXD Artist uh, 2009 Kresge Artist Fellow Sangor Reed, and 2018 Kresge Artist Fellow Richard Newman of the Hinterlands for an incredible panel discussion. Um, so if you have any questions during the discussion, um, please include them in the Q&A section of your Zoom, not the chat, but the Q&A portion, um, and I'll be checking those uh, those questions. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Lauren Rossi. Thank you so much, Dominique, and I'm really happy to be here and to see um, so many of you join us tonight. Um, I want to um, give a little bit of background information about our guests this evening that I'll be talking to. Um, so first, the Hinterlands um, 2018 Kresge Artist Fellows in Interdisciplinary Theater are a Detroit-based company creating performances and public events that are highly irrational and deeply American. From their original touring pieces to the events they curate in their Detroit neighborhood, their work is built around pressing into the unknown areas of personal and collective history with fearless physicality and a sense of humor. Formed in 2009 by Richard Newman and Liza Bealby, their performances smash seemingly disparate images and ideas together, culminating in new, highly layered meanings that are greater than the sum of their parts. The Hinterlands are the artists and residents and program curators of Playhouse, a Detroit neighborhood-based performance space and collaboration with Powerhouse Productions. The Hinterlands AXD project, Freeways and Side Streets, was a day-long performance event that took place along Conant Street between the Davison Freeway and I-94, at Playhouse and online, exploring the myriad of ways that this tiny commercial corridor straddling the Detroit and Hamtramck boundary ties into um, and parallels spaces, communities, and imaginations around the globe. Working with residents, artists, and businesses on Conant, along with their international counterparts, the Hinterlands used live streaming, theatrical actions, and one-on-one -on -one conversations to explore how hyper-local stories can connect with global audiences. Welcome Richard Newman, co-director of The Hinterlands. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and I also want to welcome Sangor Reed, 2009 Kresge Artist Fellow in Visual Arts. Sangor's work explores the interactions between the human body and the environment, creating visual representations of dreams, memories, and traces of human contact with nature. Reed's work has been exhibited in the U.S. and abroad in galleries and museums, including the Museum of Contemporary Art Detroit, Kentler International Drawing Space in New York, St. Catherine Museum in Canada, and the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture in New York. His work is in private, public, and corporate collections. Sangor's AXD project, Aquatic Messaging, was a performance combining dance, music, and visual art to promote dialogue around issues of water justice in our immediate and global community. Through movement, sound, and graphic messaging, the audience gained knowledge about the privatization, 
deprivation, and contamination of our water sources while learning to heal their own relationship with water. Welcome, Sangor. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you guys both for being here. Um, I'm really happy to see you too. It's been way too long, um, all of us <laughs> here in our, in our own um, quarantine situations. Um, so I wanted to start out by asking um, each of you if you could talk a little bit about your own experience with presenting your AXD project. I think, you know, through the podcast and through the book and, and for those of us who attended your events and um, are aware of your projects, um, we know a little bit about um, the projects themselves, but can you talk about your um, own personal experience with your project? Um, whoever wants to start. Um, Maybe Sangor, you have a bigger smile, so why don't All you right. start? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, you know, my AXD project really provided me with uh, an opportunity for a tremendous growth, uh, not only as an artist, but as a person. And uh, before last year, I'd never done a solo art performance and really put myself out there like that as an artist. So, uh, you know, I've been painting these images of water for years, and I just got to a point where I was like, okay, what's next? Um, and then, like, I literally started having these visions of myself dressed in a wetsuit walking down Seven Mile. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, what does this mean? You know, like, why do I keep having these kinds of visualizations? And so developing my project gave me an opportunity to take what I've been feeling and doing in my studio as it pertains to my relationship with water and out into my larger community. Um, you know, to foster greater dialogue around issues of water, um, along with the health and wellness component of clean water consumption. Um, and so, and it made me ask myself, you know, how much water do I drink in in my own personal journey towards better health and wealth? And I just, I felt like that if we don't talk about water enough in our daily lives, I felt that, like, if I started talking more about what it means to me personally, I can empower my community with more information on their per state, uh, you know, and ensuring that they have access to clean water and that they utilize this element to ensure their own personal ability to thrive as healthy people. Yes, thank you. Um, Richard, how about you? Can you tell us about your experience um, yeah. presenting your AXD project? Yeah, I um, well first, you know, thanks for having me here, and um, I really love that image, Singor of the of the wetsuit. Um, oh. <laughs> I, it's like really, really powerful to me. I, I <laughs> so so thank you for that. Um, awesome. Thank you. you know, yeah. So uh, for so for our work, and I'm going to talk about. Um, so the hinterlands is co-directed by myself and Liza Bilby, and. Um, this project uh, with, for ArtXD was a way of bringing together two, two different aspects of our, of our practice, which one is this neighborhood-based work that we've been doing um, for a while, and then specifically looking work that looks at this Hamtramck Detroit border. So that since um, 2015 with the Porous Borders Festival, we had like a, you know, a two-day festival with um, you know, 40 something artist groups involved that was looking at this municipal border. And we've continued to do work on the border and also looking at that specific border and which we cross every day. You know, it's, um, it's just this little sort of subconscious little blip in the city, um, which has a lot of ramifications. You know, if we look at, at Detroit, um, the borders of Detroit have huge ramifications for the people in the city. Um, so Hamtramck and Detroit is like is is a more porous border than let's say a, uh, like a, a border between um, Gross Point and Detroit. So it seems like a place where we can start to really look at this. Um, what a what what do these borders do and how do we cross them? Um, so we've been doing that research for a while with different kinds of performance events, and we've also been doing these international projects since um, well as a company since 2010, and uh, building collaborations with artists in um, well, a lot of different countries, and specifically with this project with artists from um, China, Russia, and Iran, who we were working with on a long-term sort of iterative internet-based performance project called The Enemy of My Enemy. So we were able to bring these things to, 
two things together and it was really gratifying to find like how some of that international work could um, reflect some of these very local questions that we're looking at. It was also logistically really hard <laughs> to be frank. <laughs> And, uh, and that was the like, uh, part, of my experience. part of my experience. Yeah, it sounds like it was quite an adventure. Um, yeah. And really incredible um, for both of you that you were able to take this opportunity to kind of push yourselves um, in Sangor for you, which seems like um, a very new direction in terms of performance. And then Richard, for you and Liza to really be able to push the work that you had been doing. And um, for me, that's one one of the most special things about this um, this year's iteration or 2019 iteration of AXD is that it is so um, all of the projects were na were designated to be neighborhood based and so um, they were all you know we hear about people making site specific work a lot and sometimes that means something and sometimes it seems to mean nothing but um, for for the AXD projects, you know, I think where each of them was presented was really significant, and um, obviously um, for both of your projects, very significant. And Sangor, I can't <laughs> I can't get the image of you walking down Seven Mile in a wetsuit out of my head now. So thanks for that. Um, so I wanted to ask both of you also, um, what keeps you well. Specifically for, for Richard, for you and Liza, um, what keeps you um, rooted in making work in Detroit's neighborhoods? Well, why is so, neighborhood-based yeah. work so important to you? So um, I think there's a few layers, uh, and one is, and with this with this kind of neighborhood-based work we've been doing, it's a way of looking at the theatricality of the everyday somehow. Um, like we're theater artists, um, even though like this project really was not a theater piece, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But the kind of the, the like small dramas and things that go on in like, for instance, like a part of this project, one of the aspects of this project was the takeout takedown, which was this, um, we've been doing like, basically we've been organizing these friendly neighborhood competitions between business owners like since 2015 the first was like an oil change race between like two oil change businesses one on the detroit side one on the hamtramck side of the border right on carpenter and then we've been doing the takeout takedown for a couple of years which is like we call in an order to two different takeout joints like the identical order and then we um we time you know, we have a we basically treat it as a sporting event liza has this like um sports commentator and we're like live streaming from the different places back to our space and uh and then like it's you know we have cheerleaders it's like a whole thing it's it's and for us it's this way of like celebrating like for which this incredible heroic thing which is when you're really hungry that like you order takeout and it's ready it's amazing you know and like we go to these places all the time you know like i go to zam zam all the time or to like motoban suites you know like mm -hmm. weekly so it's like to be able to to celebrate that, th like those workers and those businesses and, and um, is like, for us feels natural. It feels like a part of how we wanna exist in the world and also um, like understand like how, how can art take, instead of like forcing our ideas and aesthetics on a neighborhood, you know, it's like what is going on in the place how can we celebrate mm -hmm. what's going on there? Um, how can we find ways to like heighten it just a little so that you can see mm -hmm. it? Um, Cause we take it for granted. So I think that's part of it. We, I, I really like, I deeply love our neighborhood. I love like our block. And so it, it does feel like it, it um, yeah, it's just something that, that we, we continue to do for those reasons. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I, that's one thing that I've always really appreciated about the hinterlands and your work is that um, it it does enliven these um, sort of I don't know seemingly mundane parts of our everyday life in in our community and how we interact with our community and um, so that's something I've always really enjoyed about your work. Well, um, and I just really quickly for takeout, like now ahead. also takeout has become this even more heroic thing. Like 
Oh, totally. Right? You know, it's like, uh, it's like we did this in the fall and now, although like we thought we, we thought about doing another one, but it's like logistically is hard right now, but it's like, right. it's, um, it's like really, like really your heroes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like really. So. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Um, and Sangor, I wanted to ask you too, um, because, um, at least, you know, you talked about how this was sort of your first solo performance. And I think what, um, what I and probably lots of other people um, in the art community in Detroit know you as is, is more of a studio painter. And so um, I, you know, rather than asking you, you know, um, the same question as Richard, I wanted to kind of ask you about, um, you know, how, how your work um, is or, or will continue to be sort of rooted in Detroit's neighborhoods and is, um, is performance um, and kind of neighborhood-based projects, something that you see as um, something that you'll continue doing? Well, um, yeah, I mean, in this project, I uh, wanted to engage several neighborhoods, um, uh, Bagley, Belmont, Fitzgerald, uh, Greenfield, and I think Pembroke. Um, you know, those neighborhoods on Northwest Detroit, um, half of my life has been sent has been spent on this side of town. Um, I have lots of family members who live over here. Uh, my grandmother uh, lived in the area right off of Six Mile. Um, my studio is in this area. Uh, I'm a member of an organization called the National Conference of Artists Michigan. And our gallery is in Northwest Activity Center. I've been spending the last 20 years uh, every summer in the Northwest Activity Center uh, running a summer arts program. Uh, so it was like, this is, uh, this is only natural uh, for me to like really want to expand my fingerprint in this community, um, you know, and explore ways in which I could bring the community together uh, to experience art in a different way um, and evaluate the role that water plays in our lives while I'm doing it. Um, and mm -hmm. I just... You know, I felt like if I can raise awareness about the importance of hydration in my own personal life, I would be able to somehow give people a stronger agency, you know, when it comes to larger issues centered around water access and our rights to clean water. Um, and then, too, like you said, I mean, it, it took a lot for me to be vulnerable um, and to use my body as a tool for making work in the moment and in a public sphere that was very new to me, uh, but I actually, like, one, once I, like, got to, like, do it, and, like, it was, it was showtime, you know, I actually felt very safe and very much at home in these spaces, um, and I was surrounded by my family, friends throughout the whole process, so it was, like, I was no longer working in isolation in my studio, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was, like, among people, making art with people, and that, like, allowed mm -hmm. me to really stretch myself you know, mentally, spiritually, physically, um, you know, so, that, you know, being able to have, you know, these kinds of experiences in this community is what really helps to keep me rooted, you know, because um, I, I, I feel like, well, you know, my, my um, performances were very successful, and it's like every time I was finished, I was immediately focused on the next project. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm really, I'm really excited to, you know, to embark on my next performance. That's what's up. Um, so uh, you mentioned the word isolation. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, I know, Richard, you already mentioned um, the sort of new challenges that come along with ordering takeout um, in the time that we are living in currently, um, but I wanted to, um, you know, be mindful of the fact that we're um, all in our own separate spaces and we're communicating through the internet together um, as a way of being together tonight. And so I wanted to ask each one of you um, if you could share briefly um, on, you know, what are, what are the sort of um, challenges um, or if you'd like to look at it the other way, um, opportunities um, that you're finding for yourselves in, in this current time and this summer um, and kind of 
um, maybe looking ahead to the fall, um, what are your thoughts on how we're living right now and how it's affecting your practice? <laughs> um, well, for me, I mean, I had, um, <clears throat> in the next, uh, my next performance that I wanted to do this year, I wanted to work directly with kids at a Detroit public school uh, in the area, in this area. Um, but, you know, that immediately, you know, in January, that was no longer possible, especially once we got to March. Um, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, for me, this has really allowed for me to, you know, have an opportunity uh, for personal healing, um, to sort of realign the way that I live, the way I think, um, the way I interact with others, um, you know, and it's just been a time where I've just been like hoping and praying that we are all doing, you know, this kind of like really necessary personal work with ourselves and with our families, you know, so that we can come out of this as better human beings and stewards of our communities. Um, and, you know, and then given that, you know, this concept of clean water has involved, evolved for me into the overall concept of general cleanliness as, as a human species, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the way in which we go about doing performance and installation, um, and, you know, the ways in which we endeavor to interact with our public will now have to change. You know, we have several new layers of things that we now have to consider as artists um, as, and as, as creatives. Um, but this is definitely, you know, these circumstances allow for us to grow and give us an opportunity um, to, you know, reconsider how we conceive new work um, and the ways in which we, you know, need to change and grow. And, and also the way in which we look at how our projects can now speak to our community given our new circumstances. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. How about you, Richard? Well, um, I mean, well, we can't perform right now, you know, not, <laughs> not in, not in the way that we, um, well, see, we, I mean, we've been doing internet based work for the last like several years working, um, with mm -hmm. these international projects and we're feeling done with that, you know, um, like really wanting to return to liveness, to in-person-ness, you know? And, yeah. um, and in fact, like the, our Art XD project was a culmination of several of these international projects, like with Shen Balun in uh, Beijing. And, um, and, you know, so we were, we were moving into another phase of going back to really working on, on theater work that was going that was going to happen in small intimate spaces you know um, as well as launching a pretty large presenting initiative where we're bringing um, theater and dance and performance artists from um, around around the country to do performances in Detroit um, which which mm -hmm. was launched in February and then um, you know immediately had to you know rap cancellations in March April that, you know, realistically, we had spent a year, you know, organizing. And, um, and so it's, it has been difficult. And also the, the reality of not being able to, of thinking about how, well, how are we going to perform? Um, the performance we were working on, we're just, we set aside entirely uh, for a few reasons. Like one, it didn't, in the, and in this new context, it didn't make any sense. Like the work itself, um, we felt like couldn't, couldn't go forward, like at least in the next couple of years. Um, so we just pressed pause. And, um, and then in May, when this enormous social movement, the movement for black lives, the movement towards police and prison abolition, um, we just we basically decided to just commit ourselves um, for a time to political work, um, which like because we've been constantly in the cycle of production for years now of like constantly producing new work, um, we've never been able to like commit ourselves to 
that other the this political work the way that we that meets with our ethics and belief um so we've taken this opportunity to do that and um and now we're starting again to return well, we're, to process to um learning like learning very old songs like i'm trying i'm learning ancestral songs like some songs that are like a thousand years old um just as a way of um well working towards a new project eventually but also a way of breaking through um some of these barriers and amnesias around identity that like white americans really have and i really have um mm -hmm. like i come from some place i have a history um the world is not a blank slate and neither am i and um so there's i think this has been a time to be able to do some of that do that work and then see where where that goes mm -hmm. wow that's really powerful thank you both so much um for sharing Thank you both so much for being here tonight um, and for giving me the opportunity to have a conversation with the two of you together um, has been a gift. Um, so I know that we um, are out of time, but I'm just going to ask each of you, um, I want to kind of end this segment of our program on a note of gratitude. And so um, if each of you could just, you know, give us a word or two about something that you might be grateful for right now. Um, well, I am just so incredibly grateful for my mother, my family, my friends, my dear friends, uh, students, former students, fellow artists. Um, I've been in touch with so many people from all over the world this year, um, and they've been so loving and supportive of me this year, and I don't know what I would have done without them. So I just want to thank all of them and thank God for his many, many blessings. Thank you. I'm, I'm grateful for my family and both my, um, both my actual family and my chosen family um, and my teachers, you know, and both the teachers that I've worked with directly and those who just teach me every day. Um, and, and folly, you know, and mistakes and failure, which is also my teacher. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much um, for being here and for your work. Um, and I can't wait to see um, what comes next. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren, Sangor, and Richard for that uh, insightful, inspiring discussion. And uh, yeah, Sangor, I can't get my out of my head you running down seven miles in a wetsuit. Um, <laughs> But that, hey, that's performance, that's performance art, right? That's, that's <laughs> art. Um, and uh, I'm checking the, the comments. I don't see any Q&A, but uh, Raven Jones Stanbro said she loved the uh, fact, Lauren, that you ended with uh, what can we be grateful for. So uh, on that note, just, you know, as you guys are still hanging out with us, drop us a line in the chat of, you know, what you're grateful for. Let's keep that, that gratitude flowing. Um, AXD highlighted so many talented and the diverse artists from music to poetry, to performance art, to installation, and film was also another one of the art forms that were represented. Um, and so I am excited to introduce you to another one of our awesome AXD artists and 2018 Kresge Artist Fellow, Julia Yesbik, um, to share a little bit about her film, Maritime, Maritime, um, that's, it was a film about uh, Beirut and uh, Detroit and their relation to place and belonging and diasporas um, and the refracted memories of uh, places known through other lifetimes. Um, and so she's going to share just a little bit of a, a small clip uh, from that film that will be coming soon. Um, so without further ado, Julia Yesbert. Hello. It's so nice to be here. Thank you all. I just want to thank uh, Dominique and Cezanne and Lauren again for putting this all together and for putting together the entire AXD uh, residency or whatever we call it <laughs> um, event. Uh, it was a really 
it was a really, really kind of crucial moment for me to be able to do this. And so I just want to say thank you to you guys for making it happen. Um, so what you're going about to see, right? I don't think they've seen it yet, correct? Okay, so I think you're about to see um, a two minute trailer of a longer film. The uh, full length of the film, I think will be somewhere around 20 or 30 minutes. It is still in production um, and it was mostly shot in um, 2018 uh, in Beirut and Detroit. And um, I think I will say some more words after you watch the clip and talk a little bit about um, some recent things that have changed in the place where this was shot. So enjoy the clip and then I'll come back on and say a few words. How does one return to a place you've never been? Or to a place that no longer exists as it once did? Wow, 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 wow. Um, thank you so much, uh, Julia, for uh, giving us a, a snippet uh, of, of your film. Um, as you know, many of you uh, may know, um, a tragedy just recently um, hit Beirut with an, an explosion. Um, and as artists, you know, it's our job to speak to the times, but sometimes, you know, we speak on something and it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's timely and it's needed and it's necessary. You can never predict um, what's going to happen in the future. And also, you know, when things happen in other countries, uh, you know, sometimes it's difficult to be just so disconnected from it. I think that's what's so powerful about us all being in a pandemic is it's affecting everybody at once. Um, but, you know, Beirut is, is hurting right now. And uh, Julia, um, if you would just, uh, please share some words and some insights um, as I know this is a place that is very near and dear to your heart. Um, so please share with us, you know, your thoughts, your feelings, and then also how we can support and help uh, the, the beautiful people there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Dominique, for that. Um, yeah, so um, it's really, <laughs> it's, it's hard for me to see this footage right now. Um, I was there in 2018 on an artist residency, as I said before the clip, and there with my two very young children who at the time were six months and two and a half years old. And um, because
um, of a couple artist-run spaces if people are interested in donating to them. These are friends of ours from Beirut. Um, one of them is the is a, a joint GoFundMe page that is going to Studio Safar, Paper Cup, and Jana Saleh, which are integral part of Beirut's new creative wave. And these studios have been really nurturing like countless numbers of young Lebanese creatives for over 10 years now. And they were all very, uh, very heavily damaged. So anything you can um, muster to send their way would be great. Um, the other link is for the Arab Image Foundation, which is based in the Sursak Museum, which was also very quite near to the blast site. And they're um, an organization that uh, archives um, old photographs of national history and artistic history and, and kind of cultural treasures that, you know, would really, uh, we'd like to see kept alive. So those are two kind of like artist groups that could really use some support if you can manage it. And then finally, a little closer to home, um, also our very own Rola Nashef, who was also a Kresge artist fellow uh, for film. She's a, a brilliant Lebanese American filmmaker. She will be holding a screening of her award-winning film, Detroit Unleaded, on this Saturday, August 22nd. Uh, the screening will be a drive-in at the Film Lab in Hamtramck. And the Film Lab has offered to match all donations up to $5,000 to go directly to the Lebanese Red Cross. So if you can um, make it to that, that would be great. But also, actually, I'm going to just add to the chat as well if I can. Um, uh, or maybe someone can repost it. There's a link also that if you cannot attend the screening, there is um, a donation button on the Film Lab's website where you can donate as well that way and they'll match the donations. So those are just a couple ways that um, I think could really be helpful if people have, um, you know, a second and a dime to spare. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a really, I think that you know, I obviously didn't have any clue how much this project was going to speak to the themes of this, of Living X, you know, when we started. Um, but I think that it really just points to the ways in which um, we as artists, yeah, are kind of called upon to respond to the world and what happens around us. And I think that, you know, in this way, I feel very fortunate um, to not only be a part of this great creative community, but also to have had this opportunity to make this film that that really can um, kind of speak to some of these issues that are happening there and, um, and to the beauty of, of the place and also just to the, the connections even between these places that seem so far away. You know, um, many of you know, there's a very large Lebanese population, Lebanese American population here in Detroit. So it is close to many of us. So um, yeah, I don't think that we're doing any questions or anything, so I'll just leave it at that. But I just wanted to say thank you again and um, and keep your eyes out for the film to come out. It will be finished soon. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Julia. Uh, and again, you know, uh, wonderful uh, clip. And so we're all excited uh, to be able to uh, see the film whenever you finish it. Uh, so Godspeed to you. And again, you. Um, make sure you guys check out uh, the links posted in the chat of how you can support the beautiful people of Beirut. Um, and again, our thoughts and our prayers are con uh, continue to go out to, to uh, Beirut. Um, and as I said earlier, uh, we have a lot to, to celebrate and be grateful for here at AXD. And uh, in addition to highlighting these beautiful projects and in addition to, um, you know, releasing a, a beautifully designed AXD catalog, um, the final capstone piece is the AXD Living X podcast. The podcast was hosted by Sidewalk Arts uh, Detroit Executive Director and Founder Ryan Myers Johnson. Um, and it featured a few of our AXD artists um, as they spoke to how they addressed the changing landscape of Detroit um, in America. And we are very excited to share with you a first listen um, of what you can expect from the podcast. So check it out. Welcome to the Living X podcast playlist, where you'll hear from artists that are critically and creatively responding to the changing landscape of Detroit and America.
over eight episodes, the Living X podcast focuses on the voices of Detroit-based artists and culture keepers, reflecting on their ArtX Detroit projects. We uncover how they are shaping a more equitable future for themselves and Detroit through community connections and stories of place. Each episode is hosted by Ryan Myers Johnson, an artist and curator of place-based performances and installation works. Ryan is also executive director of Sidewalk Detroit. Beginning in the summer of 2019, AXD was a year-long multidisciplinary series featuring 22 newly commissioned exhibitions, performances, and events immersed throughout Detroit, Hamtramck, and Highland Park. Living X explores what it means to live and create in uncertain and undefined times. You'll hear from artists as they navigate the richness and complexity of the city at this moment, focused on stories that are uniquely born of Detroit's people and neighborhoods. Visit artxdetroit.com and listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you subscribe to podcasts. AXD Living X Podcast is a production of Root of Two and made possible with support from the Presky Foundation. Yes, yes, yes. So we are excited about that podcast. Um, so while we are spending uh, however long uh, we will be spending in quarantine, as you binge watch Netflix and your favorite shows, make sure you take some time to check out the AXD Living X podcast. You can go to artxdetroit.com forward slash listen dash now to check it out. Or you can stream it on your favorite uh, podcast platforms if you're driving in your car or running down seven mile in a wetsuit, you can tune in and uh, check out the podcast where I had a chance to sit in um, on a few of those episodes and they are incredible. Um, you will not be disappointed. Um, and so uh, as we wrap up and come to the conclusion of this beautiful evening, um, again, thank you all so much for hanging out with us. Uh, I want to reintroduce uh, to some of you and bring back uh, Cezanne Charles, uh, again, AXD curator and Root of Two co-founder, uh, to just uh, share some, some final words as we come to the end of our, our celebration. So Cezanne, take it away. So first, I just want to say again, thank you so much to both Neek and Lauren um, for this incredible journey and this incredible year. Uh, I think somehow I might have tapped into my inner NPR. Um, but it has been fabulous to really think about um, the work that the artists are doing, but also how that becomes like this kind of playlist in this time capsule for this moment. So it's really rare for us to actually um, hear from the artists in their own words, on their own terms. Um, and so I think the podcast that got put together is phenomenal. We were, um, you know, really blessed to be able to work with Ryan as our host for it, but also the incredible team at Red Carpet Lounge who edited and mixed it. So I hope y'all will check it out and make it a kind of playlist for the summer um, as it wanes into fall. And I want to say a couple final thank yous. Um, I think it's really fitting that as we think about this Ardex being the Ardex that was about reaching deeply into neighborhoods and neighborhood spaces, both traditional and untraditional, um, spiritual as well as secular, um, and really thinking about kind of the public realm and what it means to be in both a built and living environment um, that is natural within the city. This is also the AXD that when we all come down to it, we're sitting in our homes and we're welcoming each other into our homes. And I think that that's really important because for me, it's always been about how do we reach people where they are through the arts and how do we recognize artists as part of the living and breathing fabric of our neighborhoods and communities. And so I really just want to take a moment to thank some of our other partners that have been part of this process. Um, and so for us, that has looked like a foundational partnership with the Kresge Foundation, as well as our colleagues and peers at the Kresge Arts in Detroit. We could have never worked with the kind of 
bounty and beauty of the artists through AXD if it wasn't for the way that they have been so thoughtful in their leadership of crafting the Kresge Artist Fellowship Program, the Eminent Artist Program, as well as the Gildo Award recipients. And so that applicant pool that we got to sort of, you know, put out into the world um, AXD projects through was already phenomenal in its bounty and resources. But that's also because Detroit is phenomenal in its bounty and resources for artists. And so that also really looks like the support that we have had in partnership we've had with Sidewalk Detroit, as well as Olu and Company, who has provided our PR and marketing and branding, as well as Brightly, who has made sure that our web and digital game has tried to be, uh, you know, everything it should be in this moment. And so I just want to say another thank you to them. And I also want to say just another heartfelt thanks um, to my colleagues at Root of Two. This has been a phenomenal year and it has really capped a 12-year arc of my experience in Detroit. Um, I've never been in Detroit without this program um, and so I'm really excited to see how we work, how we live, and how we move together next. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much Cezanne, Lauren, and all of our wonderful uh, partners on AXD. Shout out to Nina Payne of Foundation Management for holding down the back end of everything. Um, and again, thank you to everyone for joining us, for hanging out with us, for all of the artists. Um, as project manager, it was great. It was so fun um, working with uh, my fellow artist community. You guys are amazing. Um, and I know that we are living in very uncertain and crazy and wild times, uh, but I want to paraphrase the wonderful Nina Simone where she says that it's the artist's responsibility to reflect the times. And so I want to encourage and challenge all of the artists while we are at home, while we are trying to figure things out to, you know, don't be afraid to use your art, your platform, your voice, even in the digital world to speak to what's going on and to always practice self-care, keep your energy high, keep your vibrations high we will get through this time because we are artists and more importantly we are Detroiters and, and we're creatives and that's how we get down we always overcome um, so we want to send a peace and love to everyone please enjoy your evening and we're actually gonna um, hang out for a little bit and uh, Sacramento Knox is gonna bless us with some music to, to, to send us out on a high note so feel free to dance make sure you know you have on your pants if you're in front of your camera I know how Zoom can be uh, so make sure you can feel free to dance or vibe and just you know chat with folks uh, in the chat we'll keep it open till eight so thank you guys for attending this AXD Living X celebration um, it's been a pleasure to host peace and love you guys <laughs>